In this video, we're going to complete example three, and we're going to simplify the following fractions. Now, for a lot of you, these questions will look really simple. In fact, you could simply just type these questions into a calculator, and it will work it out for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you a very different method when it comes to simplifying fractions. We're going to be talking about highest common factors, and how they relate to prime numbers. And then we're going to see that when a number has been broken into its prime factors, it makes it really easy to simplify fractions. So let's say we want to simplify the fraction 8 over 12. When we simplify fractions, we divide both the numerator and the denominator by the same number. So I might divide them both by 2. The reason I picked 2 is because 2 is a common factor for both 8 and 12. I can divide both of these numbers by 2 and I get a whole number. 8 divided 2 is 4 and 12 divided 2 is 6. Now 4 over 6 is a more simplified version of 8 over 12. Is it the simplest fraction that we can come up with? Well, you might notice that we could have divided by a larger number. We could have divided by 4. 4 is also a common factor for both 8 and 12, because when I divide by 4, I get a nice whole number. 8 divided 4 is 2, and 12 divided 4 is 3. We now have a fraction that's in its simplest form. And the reason we were able to achieve this is because 4 is known as the highest common factor. It's the biggest number that we can divide both 8 and 12 by. Now, it's not always easy to find the highest common factor for a fraction, particularly when you have fractions with really large numbers. This brings us to our prime factors. Prime factors are a really useful method for finding highest common factors. So let's do that with our 8 and 12. Let's find our prime factors. 8 can be broken into 4 times 2, and 4 can be broken into 2 times 2. <clears throat> so we have three prime factors for 8, all of which are 2. What are the prime factors for 12? Well, 4 times 3 is 12, and 4 can be broken up into 2 times 2. So for 12, we have 3 prime factors as well. They are 2 times 2 times 3. Now we just look at 8 and 12 and go, what prime factors do they have in common? Well, they both have a 2 in common. They have a second 2 in common as well. The 2 and the 3 are not in common. Now, if you look at these common prime factors, you'll notice that 2 times 2 is 4 in both cases, which is our highest common factor. So quite often when I want to simplify a fraction, I like to break the numbers into their prime factors. So when I had 8 and 12, I could have said, well, 8 has the prime factors 2 times 2 times 2. So I'm going to write that down. And 12 has the prime factors 2 times 2 times 3. And then I just cancel. I cancel 1, 2 above and below, and another 2 above and below. Notice that we cancelled two twos above and below. That's the same as dividing by four, as dividing by our highest common factor. And we're left with the fraction two over three. Now, when you use this method, when you break numbers into their prime factors and cancel, you are guaranteed to get a fraction in its simplest form every time. Anyway, Let's now move on to example three, starting with question A. 
So we've got 72 over 96. Now, it takes quite a long time to find the prime factors of numbers. I'm going to save time. I've actually found a website here where you can just type the number in and it will give you your prime factors. So if I type 72 in here, it's going to calculate it. You'll see that my prime factors are 2 times 2 times 2, 3 2s, and 2 3s. So we'll write 72 as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Now let's find the prime factors for 96. Bringing up our website, uh, 96, let's calculate. And this time we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 2s and 1, 3. So we're going to multiply 5 2s together and then the 1, 3. All right, now that we've done that, we can just cancel. We can cancel 1, 2 above and below, another 2 and a third 2. And we can also cancel one of the threes above and below, leaving us with three at the top and two times two down the bottom. Now, two times two is four, so we can simplify this fraction to three over four. All right, let's now move on to question B. This time we're multiplying two fractions, but after we multiply them, we're then going to simplify them. Now, when you multiply fractions, you can't have a mixed numeral. I need to turn this into an improper fraction. To do that, I simply multiply and then add. All right. So 15 times 1 is 15 plus 6 is 21. That's, that means I'm going to have 21 at the top of my fraction. The denominator always stays the same. It's going to stay as 15. So I've just converted my mixed numeral to an improper fraction. The other fraction stays the same. It stays as 6 over 14. And these will be multiplied together. Now when you multiply fractions, you just multiply the top two and the bottom two separately. So it's going to be 6 times 21 over 14 times 15. Now, usually when people try and work something like this out, they go 6 times 21, write the answer down. They go 14 times 15, write the answer down, and then they simplify the fraction. But what we're going to do is we're going to break each number into its prime factors. And it's not going to be too difficult because uh, 6, 6 is just 2 times 3. So 2 times 3. And... 21 is just 7 times 3, so 7 times 3, and looking at our denominator, 14 is just 2 times 7, so 2 times 7, and 15 is 3 times 5, so 3 times 5. And now we can just cancel, cancel the 2s, cancel these 3s here, cancel the 7s, and we're left with the simplified fraction 3 over 5. So this is an example where breaking your numbers down into prime factors makes simplifying really easy. Okay, we'll move on to question C now. We've got 17 times 6 over 102. Now, when you multiply fractions, you need both numbers to be a fraction that's not overly difficult. We can just make 17, 17 over 1. So when we multiply the top two numbers, we get 17 times 6. And when we do the bottom two numbers, 1 times 102 is just 102. Now I'm going to cheat again. I'm going to find the prime factors for 102 using the website. So 102, calculate. This comes from 2 times 3 times 17. So my denominator is going to be 2 times 3 times 17. And for the numerator, I've got 17. And 6 is just 2 times 3. So 17 times 2 times 3. 
Now, when we cancel these, you're actually going to cancel every number. And we've got to be careful here because some people, they think the answer is going to be zero because everything's cancelled and there's nothing left. And they associate nothing with the number zero. But that's not really true because basically we've got the same number above as we do below. 17 times 6 is 102, so this is 102 over 102, which is the same as 1. So if you cancel them all out, it needs to equal 1. Looking at question D now, we, we have a mixed numeral. It needs to be converted to an improper fraction. We do that by multiplying and then adding. So 42 times 1 is 42, plus 18 is 60. So our numerator is now 60. The denominator stays the same. It stays as 42. So 60 over 42. And we're dividing this time by 5. We need them both to be fractions, so we'll make that 5 over 1. Now, when you divide, you flip the second fraction. So we're going to flip 5 over 1 and make it 1 over 5, and we change it from divide to times. So what do we get when we do that? Well, 60 times 1 is 60, so we're going to get 60 at the top. And for our denominator, we've got 45 times 5. And we're just going to leave it like that because we're actually trying to break these up into factors. So what are the prime factors for 60? That's one where I think I'm going to I'm going to cheat. So 60 calculate 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. Okay. So we've got 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. And for our denominator, 5 is already prime. Uh, 45 is 9 times 5, and I know that 9 comes from 3 times 3. So the prime factors for 45 are 3 times 3 times 5, and then I've got that other 5. I can now cancel, cancel my 3s, cancel my 5s. There's nothing left to cancel here. So for my numerator, 2 times 2 is 4. And for my denominator, 3 times 5 is 15. You know how sometimes you look at a fraction and you think to yourself, I know I've simplified the fraction. It's more simple than it was before. But is it in its simplest form? Well, if you broke the numbers into their prime factors and cancelled it like we did here, then I can guarantee you that this fraction is in its simplest form. It will be every time. Anyway, that concludes our video on example three. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.